But on our winter grazing system, we have two wells here on the headquarters of the ranch that that uh, provide water to our lodges and houses here. And then they actually go through my house and heat my house with a ground source heat pump and then go out and we have one of the large rubber uh, water tanks that fills up and it has a, an automatic or just a uh, overflow on it. And when that's running over, it fills a duck pond for us for wildlife. It never freezes. It's completely maintenance free. I don't have any issues with it. If you've got a fair amount of cattle on there and they're drinking a lot and they're keeping that running, you're not going to have an issue. If you've got a few cattle on there and it's sitting a lot, then you're going to run into issues. So that's the biggest key. We have here at the research center are these hard, large earth mover tires that have been have a, a kind of a flip-like uh, opening with a rubber tire curtain inside and those huge waterers with enough animals don't require any heat in the winter to keep from freezing. And I'm making those cattle walk up to a mile for that and it's kind of interesting to watch because those cattle if there is snow they will maybe only come in for water once a week or so and then it's like somebody rang the bell and they will all trail to water. And the Canadians have also shown that you can utilize snow a lot more. I've done some of my own just uh, demonstration research, I guess. I grazed a uh, pasture in the winter time and there was a dam there and I, I went over there and I chopped that ice out every day just, and, and every day those cattle would not drink. And I, I, I laugh about it, but I'd go there and actually flop that water up and down. Do you know what water is? Those cattle never drank. They were eating that snow, and as long as you have fluffier, good quality snow, we can utilize that snow. Where we get into problems, in, and it's here in the Dakotas and a lot of the northern plains, if you get some of those warmer days and you get that freezing and thawing, and it starts to get iced over, crusted, then you have problems utilizing snow. Winter water systems for cattle, uh, there's a number of commercial options available out there. Usually these run off of some sort of heat, either ground source or electrical type heat. Water's piped in under a deep buried line. Uh, this line's at least eight feet down in the ground, coming up through a vertical tube uh, to take advantage of ground heat to help uh, heat this thing. They're usually insulated. There's a float valve inside, so as animals drink, uh, the float valve releases the water valve and water refills uh, the tank. But these are usually designed for northern climates to handle sub-zero temperatures. And I guess you gotta look for what's available in your area, what other people are using, talk to other farmers in your area, what do they use, what do they like, what's been working for them. One of the things we see sometimes is we can have uh, little sites of high impact on some of these paddocks near where these water tanks are. And that can be a concern in some paddocks and a concern for some producers. People have come up with a number of different ways to deal with that. Uh, some just carry a little bit of seed in their pocket that they seed those areas down afterwards. Some try and set water tanks in different areas to try and distribute the disturbance around. In a grazing season, um, this water tank will never be put in the same place twice. So even if I graze, you know, pasture through the rotation, maybe I graze it seven times in a year, you know, I can move that, that water up or down the hill or in or back or whatever just so that, you know, they're not messing up that spot um, twice in the same year. Um, some dairy producers I know have decided that, you know, we're going to have certain areas of high impact because we're laning these animals back for milking every day. And so anything within 600 feet of that area, that more centralized area that they can come back to get water, they'll just lane them back there. So you need to look at your goals. You need to look at your farm, your resources, what you have available to you, the class of livestock that you're dealing with to really decide what kind of watering system is going to work for you.